Mac, Matt, Mac, Matt, let's do some Matt today. Forces. Okay, so this is just a support lesson one. Uh, I'm just going to go through some question support with you. And I'm actually going to go through uh, just a few questions from 10B, 10C and 10D. Uh, they don't really, in any of those exercises, get onto the you know the the, the more sort of exa exam style questions. They're just practice and, and they're fa fairly straightforward. So I'm just going to go through a few questions. I'm going to be fairly quick because I've just put a loaf of bread in the oven. Um, so if the beeper goes off, the lesson's going to get cut short. Okay, so um, here we go. Uh, it's been a nightmare today trying to get work done. My mum just phoned to tell her tell me all about her puppy, which I've not seen because she's on lockdown. Um, she sent me pictures of it. It looks more like a guinea pig. Um, but anyway... So where are we? 10B. Um, so all I'm going to do is I'm going to just go through a few of these. Um, so I'll just put which one exercise I'm doing. 10B. So this is on page 161. And I'm only actually going to do question one for you. The rest of them are all very, very similar. So you can work it out from, you know, the first one from 1A. So from 1A, it says in each of the... Uh, each of these questions um, so there's four parts of this but I'm going to do going to do part one a particle is acted upon so there's our particle so it's got no mass uh, it's acted upon by uh, some forces given and 1a it gives you these forces minus I plus 3j Newtons and it also gives you the force 4 I minus J Newtons. It gets acted on those and it says um, give work out the resultant force. So you've got to work out the resultant force. Resultant force. Okay, so that's what we're working out on this first one. Just checking that in. So here we go. Yeah, so that all works. So here we go. There's our particle. Let's move it down a little bit and let's just break this up. Uh, minus I. So it's uh, minus 1 that way, plus 3j, so 3 up, um, 4i, so 4 that way, minus j, and minus 1 down. Okay, so I've just put those forces in there, um, and then the resultant, well, first of all, there's two things here, resultant force that it's asking for, let's have a look at the resultant vector. So the I is 4 that way, minus 1 that way. So the resultant is going to, you know, we talked about this net force, is going to be 3I. So it's going to be 3 that way, isn't it? Because 4 take away 1 is 3 in that direction, the positive direction. And 3 take away 1 in the Y. So that's the resultant vector. So those two vectors are the same as that. Okay. And that effectively what's happening to this particle is it's got a force of 3i and 2j so 3 along and 2 up that is the resultant okay and that resultant by Pythagoras is 3 squared um, plus 2 squared so 3 squared plus 2 squared is 9 plus 4 is 13 so it's root 13 so the resultant vector is the square root of 13 newtons it doesn't ask for the angle if it did you know, the angle to the horizontal would be inverse tan, opposite over adjacent, inverse tan or tan to the minus one of two thirds, whatever that is. And if it wanted it as a bearing, you just take that off 90 degrees to give you that angle there. And that's it turning clockwise from north. That would be that angle as a bearing or that direction, sorry, as a bearing. OK, um, so that's question 1A from 10B. Um, I'm going to do a, a couple from the next exercise, so let's move on. Is that okay? Good. Um, it, it just um, informing you as well, as I look at part B to this, the next, the very next question has them in that form, the column vector form. So it talks about a force 5 over 3. Of course, that's just 5i plus 3j, so you can treat it like that if you want. Okay, or leave it like that. Okay, so that's 10b. Um, 10C. Now I'm going to go through question. So let me just flick over. So I pick, so just picked out random ones. So number one. So I'm going to do number one. So first, and it says find the acceleration 
of, so it wants the acceleration of a particle of mass, 400 kilograms, so there's my mass of 400 kilograms, acted on by a force of 120 newtons, okay, so that's it basically, and it wants the acceleration, now it doesn't say where this is, or it, you know, it might be that block that it did in space, it's 400 kilograms, it might have some you know, it might be on a table on a smooth surface and it might have mg there, it's weight acting down. But it's this 120 newtons that is the force that's going to make it move. And it's going to make it move with this acceleration. So it's using this little friend of ours, Newton's second law, F equals ma. I think it's his second law, I hope it is. I said that with conviction. F is equal to ma. And the force is 120 newtons is equal to, and it's as simple as that, times A, 400A. So we divide both sides by 400. Uh, on 120 divided by 400, and it's 3 tenths, so 0 0.3 metres. That's your acceleration per second to the minus 2. Okay, uh, simple as that. So that's going to accelerate away. Um, I'm going to do question 4 as well. So that's number one, really simple. Um, exercise 10C, so question four. Question four, it's got a P by it to tell you it's a problem. It's not much of a problem. Um, and here it is. Uh, there we go. And it says an astronaut uh, weighs 735 Newtons on Earth. So here he is. There he is. There's on, and he weighs 735 newtons on earth and what is it and 120 newtons on the moon so same uh, person he or she weighs that much on earth and when they travel to the moon they weigh that much so okay their mass is the same but the gravity on earth and on the moon is different and it's saying work out the acceleration due to gravity on the moon so in other words the, the pull of gravity on the new on the moon what how does that make things accelerate you drop an apple on earth we know it it, it accelerates towards the planet at 9.8 meters per second square what's the uh, the pull on the moon um, what's the acceleration of, of an apple dropping onto the moon so this here, of course, represents mass times gravity, doesn't it? And we know that the gravity of the Earth is 9.8. So if we, this is the force, the weight is the force, F equals ma. The force is 735 newtons. We know that the acceleration is 9.8 meters per second squared. So all we do is divide that, the newtons, 735, divided by 9.8 and it tells me that this person weighs 75 kilograms okay and the same person weighs uh, 75 kilogram uh, no the same person has a mass of 75 kilograms on the moon they weigh something different they weigh 120 newtons so if we go the force is 120 is equal to the mass so there's the force that we've got here is equal to the mass which is 75 times the acceleration so the acceleration is 120 divided by 75 um, 120 divided by 75 just tapping on my calculator is 1.6 that's what it is on the moon and actually these do say that it's a sixth of uh, roughly a sixth of the uh, acceleration on earth so if we times that by six does that get us close to 9.8 it 9.6 yeah it does okay so that's what they say about the moon about a sixth is it a sixth of the mass of the earth it must be connected mustn't it so that's question four i'm going to go through 5a and b um, so question 5a, it just says in each scenario the forces, uh, I'll do them in blue, it says in each scenario 
the forces acting on the body cause it to accelerate as shown. Find the magnitude of the unknown force. So the first one is a two kilogram block and it's just drawn a diagram and it's got P there and it's got 2GN there. And I just want to explain this to you, three meters per second. Right. So, so this is a block. It's giving you the accelerator. It's accelerating up. So that means that P is more than this. 2G, often used by mathematicians. Okay, it's mg. It's it's the weight of this block. So this is on Earth. It's the weight of this block. To, it's, this force is lifting that block up. The weight of this block is its mass times. Um, the, you know, times acceleration and acceleration in this case for a block is gravity. So gravity is acting down. So that's you often see it, you know, it written like this 2G. It means, of course, 2 times 9.8. That is if it was 3 kilograms, it would be 3 times 9.8. That is the weight of any block, any object on Earth. So we need to go F equals MA. And the net force here, we know it's going that way um, because it's telling you it's, it's accelerating that way. The net force is what's ever left over when we take this off that. So the net force is P minus the 2 times 9.8. Now 2 times 9.8 is 19.6. That is the net force, isn't it? Okay, um, Because the P has to be more than the 19.6. And the mass is 2 and the acceleration is 3. So there we go. So P is 19.6 is equal to 6. And we add 19.6 to both sides. So P is equal to 25.6 newtons. OK, so P is 25.6 newtons. You can see that's more than 19.6. It gives us a net um force uh, a net force of six newtons okay it gives us a net force of six newtons um, that is equivalent to the mass times the acceleration okay so it has to be this to overcome the weight and to accelerate that object at three meters per second squared and the second one of that in that diagram so if I do B, it's um, a block there. Now it's four kilograms. P is there. It's saying there's a 10 Newton force acting down. There's P. 4G acting down, obviously the weight, and it's going that way. Two meters per second squared. So it's accelerating down. That means that this 4G, which is, of course, 4 times 4 times 9.8. So let's just go straight to it. It's 39.2 newtons. That's what that is. That weight is more than these uh, two put together. In fact, actually, no. Look at this. 10 newtons. That's adding it, adding to it. So this all together, the force going down... The force going down is, and it's going that way, so the force going down is 49.2 newtons, isn't it? Okay, I'll take that N off because I'm going to put that straight into, okay. The net force, of course, moving in this direction is those two minus that because that has, that's, that's keeping it, holding it back a little bit, but not enough to keep it moving this way. So the net force is now that, isn't it? All of it, because it's going in this way. So the 39.2 and the 10 are combining to make 49.2 newtons acting in that way. Minus a little bit of P that's holding it back is equal to the mass, which is 4 times its acceleration in that direction, which is 2. So 49.2 minus P is equal to 8. P over to that side, 8 over to that side, and we get 41.2 newtons is equal to P. So P must be um, P must be 41.2 um, newtons. So quite a lot really, 41.2 newtons, but it's being overcome, isn't it, by 49.2 newtons going in the opposite direction.
Um, so that is 5b and I wanted to go through question 11. I want to go through question 11, a reason for this. Oops, I put 11b, but 11. This is still on exercise 10c, but question 11, I thought I'd go through that one because that combines, um, it combines f equals ma with equations of motion because, you know, guys, when, when things start accelerating, then particles or vans, when they start accelerating, then their velocity changes, doesn't it? Time goes on, they travel distances. And we just then, we can forget about F equals MA once we've worked out that ac acceleration. Once we've got that acceleration that the force is producing, then we can just apply our equations of motion to find out how far it travels, how long it takes, you know, what's its initial velocity, all of those things come into play then that we've just been doing in vertical motion and motion before that. So this is the engine of a, a van has a mass of four. So this is our van and it has a mass of, that's my van, sorry. And it has a mass of 400 kilograms. And it cuts out when moving along a horizontal road with a speed of 16 meters per second. So it's traveling at a constant velocity of 16 meters per second. But the engine's just cut out, okay? And so it comes, the van comes to rest without the brakes being put on. So there's no brakes being put on. In a model of the situation, it is assumed that the van is subject to the resistive force, which has a constant magnitude of 200 newtons, okay? So the van is traveling in that direction but there's some resistant forces that's friction that's air resistance okay and that is 200 newtons acting in that direction okay so there it is so 200 newtons is acting back in that direction oh i'm making a mess of this i start this video again okay but it's going that way so let's there you go there's a little cabin there Okay, sorry, that's a rubbish fan. Kilograms. Um, let's have a look at what it's saying. So I have to turn over. Find how long it takes for the van to stop. Okay, so how long does it take to stop? So it goes along here like that, and it stops here. Stops. So at this point, T is naught. T is. So this is part A. How long does it take to stop? To find out how long it takes to start, we need to find the deceleration, okay? And the deceleration is this. So first of all, if we apply F equals MA, what is the force? It's going that way. This force is going in the opposite direction. So the force is actually a minus 200 because it's resisting, it's slowing it down. So it's a minus 200 force going that way. Okay, the force pulling it, you can do it the net force if you want in this direction. The force pulling it now is zero because they've just turned the engine off minus whatever's going that way, which is minus 200. And that's equal to mass times acceleration. So 400 times A. Okay, so 400 times the acceleration. And when we divide by 400, I was gonna do that on my calculator there, you can see that it gives me minus 0 0.5, doesn't it? 200 divided by 400 is a half. So that is, um, the acceleration is minus 0 0.5 meters per second squared. So you know now that that is actually a deceleration, isn't it? It's slowing down from our work we did on uh, motion and the equation, the SUVAT equations, minus an acceleration that is negative is a slowing down. So, um, how long does it take to reach here? So if we go, if we go V is equal to U plus AT, okay? So we're trying to get to a velocity of zero because that's when it stops, when the initial velocity was 16, okay? So I put V equals, but in our equation, it becomes U because it's at the start, isn't it? Plus, the acceleration which is minus 0.5 times the time. Add 0.5t to both sides, 0.5t is equal to 16 
divide both sides by 0 0.5 and we get 32 seconds. Okay, so it takes 32 seconds. Uh, T is equal to 32. Put it there before it stops. So that's the first one. Find how far the van travels before it stops. Uh, again, we can do two things. We're, we're spoiled for time now because we've got time, so we can go S equals UT plus a half AT squared. So we can um, do that if we want. Um, should we do that? Um, I'm going to go V squared equals U squared plus 2AS. I'm going to do that one because I'm going to go the velocity squared at this point here is naught squared is equal to 16 squared plus 2 times minus 0 0.5 times the distance travelled. So I'm going to use that one. I could have used S equals UT plus a half AT squared. This one's a little bit less to do. It gives me the same answer. 2 times minus 0 0.5 is minus 1S. So therefore, S is equal to 16 squared. I'm going to take it over uh, to that side. Okay, so the distance travel is just 16 squared. So 16 squared is equal to 256 metres. I should have known that. So it travels. You could have used S equals UT plus a half AT squared. And again, the initial velocity was 16 times 32 plus a half times minus 0 0.5 times 32 squared. And that would have given you 256. Okay. Um, so, and the last one is comment comment on the suitability of the modelling assumption. Uh, suitability of it, uh, the modelling assumption, well, well, I mean, it's okay. It depends on if this is a perfectly flat road. It's unlikely to be that, is it? So it is a, a rough model, I would say. There you go, I've commented on it. And the last thing that I wanted to look at um, was, uh, yeah, the reason I did number 11, it was the last one from 10C, but it also, it combined it, it, combined it with equations of motion. And I'm going to do 10D for you now, and 10D, I'm just going to do questions one and two, the, the two first ones, and they're just simple, but you can do one and two, you can do all of them, because they all look much the same to me. So, number one, A, and it says that a resultant force of I plus 4J Newtons acts on a 2 kilogram mass particle. It is a particle of mass. Find the acceleration in the form. So, yeah, so I can see why I did this one now. Find acceleration, find acceleration. But it wants it in the form of pi plus qj meters per second for the minus two. So we're not going to find by Pythagoras and the direction and, and do it that way. We're going to leave it like that and find the magnitude and bearing. So that's part one, part two, mag and bearing of acceleration. Okay, right, okay, let's do that. So all we're going to do is go F equals MA. And the force is, the resultant force is I plus 4J is equal to the mass times the acceleration. And there you go. Divide both sides by 2. And we'd get acceleration is equal to half I plus 2j meters per second squared that's it simple as that okay the magnitude and the bearing of the acceleration which direction is that acceleration acting in and what is the magnitude the magnitude of course is think of it as you know it's accelerating at half a meter per second that way and two meters per second that way so that is the resultant 
acceleration. So it's the square root of 0.5 squared plus 2 squared is equal to root 17 over 2. So the acceleration is 2.06 rounded off meters. I don't know whether it says exact. I haven't done it exact. It doesn't say. So it might be root 17 over 2 or whatever in the back. So, but I've done 2.06 meters per second the second squared and the direction is that angle there but it does say as a bearing so let's work that out first that is the tan to the minus one the inverse tan of opposite over adjacent okay of two over 0.5 because that's tan isn't it from basic trigonometry opposite over adjacent so two divided by 0.5 is four inverse tan of four so shift tan of four is equal to 75.96. I'm just going to go theta is equal to 76 degrees. I'm going to round that one off because it was it was actually 75.96 degrees there. That might just be going off the screen. It is. Okay, but it does ask for a bearing. Now the bearing, remember, okay, because this is I and J, I and J is always east and north. So that is your north so that is your bearing and the bearing is always three figures turning clockwise from north so four to make 80 and another 10 so zero one four degrees as a bearing and that's number one okay one a and b acceleration as a vector form i and j form magnitude pythagoras as we do with any vector and the direction which we've done lots of times now and the last one the beep has not gone so i know that i've not talked for more than 35 minutes so far because that's how long i put it in the oven for so i'm just going to do question two and this is my last one and this is from exercise 10d a resultant force of 4i plus 3j newtons acts on a particle m there's M, and it acts on it, causing it to accelerate at 20i. So the acceleration is 20i plus 15j meters per second squared. So you can see this is going to be easy, isn't it? Work out the mass of the particle. So this here, acting on that, is 4i plus 3j. So it's like 4i plus 3j is there, 4, 3. Okay, so that is the force, and that force is 4i plus 3j on that. So F is equal to ma. The force, the resultant force, so when it says resultant force, it might, it might have been there's lots of forces acting on it, but they all combine to be equivalent to that one. They've added up all the i's and added up all the j's and they've got that. So 4i plus 3j is equal to the mass, which we don't know, times the acceleration, which is 20i plus 15j. Okay, and so what must m be that we times this by to make, you know, four? So m must be a fifth, mustn't it? A fifth of that, and a fifth of that would give me three. So I'm just going, uh, you know, I'm just sort of looking at that. I just, I just compare the i's. It has to be the same for the j's. So, what do a times twenty by to make four? Because I've got to obviously multiply this out. Well, m has got to be a fifth. Okay, a fifth of twenty. Twenty divided by five um, is four. So m is a fifth. So the mass, a fifth of course, is 0 0.2. And SI units are in kilograms, so it must be 0 0.2 kilograms or 200 grams. Okay, and that's question two. They don't really get any harder than that. The combining forces, adding up I's and J's, getting resultant forces, getting using you're only using F equals MA, so a really simple equation. Um, and you can see how to do it in vectors. So you can do 10 A, B, C, and D now um, without any further. Uh, you know explanation i'm going to look at 
of specific exam questions next, connected particles, that is pulleys, cars with caravans and so on. So I'm going to, and they're the ones you do get on the exam. All right, so I'll go through those, you know, a lesson on each, a short lesson on each, but that's enough now for you to go through it. Message me if you get any problems um, on show my homework with any particular questions and, and I'll do a little vid of those like I do and send you the link. Okay, bye bye.